welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host and teacher, Mr. Takeda. I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach you some algebra. This is lesson 6.6 .6 on geometric sequences. And you might be saying to yourself at this point, geometric sequences, he already talked about that, and we've already, we've already used those, and you're right. So I'm going to skip over a lot of these examples. We'll just look at them very briefly and get to the meat of it. Hopefully this is a, a fairly short video. Um, first, the course concept is that geometric sequence, the ratio between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. We call this common ratio. I've been calling it the common factor sometimes, but you'll see that we multiply the previous number by the same value to get to the next value. So one times five is five. We've seen that before, right? So common ratio, common uh, factor, geometric sequence. Uh, identifying a geometric sequence, uh, we've done this before when we looked at whether or not sequences were generating um, linear, arithmetic would be linear, or exponential functions. So um, I'm not going to talk about this too much. You already know how to do this. Extending geometric sequences, well, that's just a matter of finding that common ratio and just extending it. So for example, 3, 6, 12, 24, I can see my common ratio is times 2. So 12, 24, I would have 48, and then 96, and then 192. Right? So that's, that's pretty straightforward. So we're not going to worry about that too much on this video, because you, you already know how to do that. Um, graphing a geometric sequence, if you graph this geometric sequence, 36, uh, we'll call it uh, 132, rather, 132, 2, 16, 3, 8, 4, 4, 5, 2. What do you notice if you graph these points? Well. You should say, what do you think you should say? That's right, that they're forming what looks like an exponential function. Geometric sequences generate exponential functions. And again, we've been through all that. So let's get to the meat of the video here. Um, this is the equation for a geometric sequence um, where you're trying to find a particular term in the sequence. Uh, in a geometric sequence. A of n is the nth term, right? So the first term, third term, 15th term, 100th term, whatever term we're looking for. That is basically kind of our y value. A to the first, or an a sub 1, I should say. A sub 1, this is the first value in the sequence. R is our common ratio, whatever we're multiplying or dividing by. The power of n minus 1, that's how, that's, we'll use this to come up with our nth term. Okay, so once you get this into your notes, we'll go to the next, um, we'll go to really the first example I want to look at here. Finding the nth term of a geometric sequence. Let's write an equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence 2, 12, 72, 432, and we'll find a sub 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, write that, uh, I'm going to write that here again so I'll have it in front of me. Okay, and then, so this equation is going to be for the nth term, would be a to the nth, that's the nth term, that's what we're looking for. And the first term here is 2. Um, 2 times what is 12? 2 times 6, we'll just check that. 12 times 6, 72, yeah, 72. So um, we'll be multiplying by 6 to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so we want to find the 10th term. They're giving us this 10 now. So a to the 10th power is equal to 2 of 6, 2 times 6 to the power of 10 minus 1, which is 9. Okay, so 6 to the 9th power is going to be a big giant number. 
one zero zero seven seven six nine six. And then multiplying that times two. Oh, I think I put my commas in the wrong place up here. Sorry. There and there. So ten million seventy seven thousand six hundred ninety six for that first number. And this our final answer here. The value of the tenth number in the sequence is twenty million one hundred fifty five thousand three hundred and ninety two. Okay. So that's using that uh, this equation. And then we have this kind of like modeling uh, this kind of a, situation here. It says clicking the zoom out button on a mapping website doubles the side length of the square map. So we're zooming out so the side length uh, doubles, right? After how many clicks on the zoom out button is the side length of the map 640 miles? Okay, so I see with one click I have a side length of 5, with two clicks it's 10, 3 is 20 because we're doubling, right? So we're doubling. So I've got this uh, this common ratio here, common ratio here of uh, two. So I want to know when is it 640. So um, so my function is going to be um, my function is going to be a sub one, which is five, times my common ratio of two to the power of n minus one. I also want to know when it's going to be 640. So let me uh, let me do it this way. Um, I'm going to kind of do like a system of equations here. Like uh, okay, so I can look at I can do this I can do this by graphing. We know how to do this by graphing here, but let's set these equal to each other, and let's just solve this algebraically. Since this is an algebra class. Okay, so we, as we've seen when we when we did exponential equations, we have to try to figure out how to get these to having the uh, same base. I can divide both sides here by five. That gives me 128 equals two to the power of n minus one, and then I can think of uh, 128 as two to the seventh. Okay, so that makes things nice and easy for us. I'm going to come up here now and say left 7 equals n minus 1. Then if I add 1 to both sides, 8 equals n. And there it is. Uh, n is my 8. So So at 8 clicks, the side of the map will be 640 miles. All right. That's it for now. We'll see you in class. I told you this would be kind of a shorter one because those early examples. We've already done a lot of that stuff as we come to the end of the chapter. A lot of it we've already done. So I'll see you in class. Have a great, great rest of your day.